Purity Testing Precious Metals Part 2 Silver Testing the purity of silver bullion products is an important consideration for any precious metal stacker. Silver bullion can be acquired in many forms from coins to rounds, bars, art pieces, and jewelry. This video will explore techniques for verifying the purity of silver products. This is part two of a two-part series. Part one discussed the purity testing of gold products. So if you're interested in that, then be sure to check out that video as well. If you enjoyed this content and you want to see more, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. As precious metal stackers, we primarily deal with coins, rounds, and bars. Or we may acquire community members poured custom silver pieces. Usually, all of these forms of bullion come with a very clear marking which designates their content, purity, and weight. But what if we were to pick something up from eBay, or at a flea market, or a yard sale, or from an unknown seller? There are techniques that can be used to verify if a silver bullion piece is authentic. But before that, I would recommend that you only buy from a reputable precious metals dealer, making sure that the dealer is getting their precious metal products straight from the source, mints and refineries, or from their authorized distributors. I would also recommend that you consider purchasing pieces that have already incorporated anti-counterfeiting technologies into their designs. There are many different techniques for testing silver, and any one test alone may not be conclusive, but combining several tests can give you a very high probability that the piece is authentic. Some techniques that don't require expensive equipment and are not destructive include a visual inspection, meaning looking for something that just doesn't seem right. This works especially well if you have a known authentic piece of the same design to use as a comparison. Weigh the piece. Knowing what the piece is supposed to weigh, then using a quality scale to verify its weight. Measurements, diameter and thickness. Because different metals have different densities, it is extremely difficult to match the exact weight of a bullion piece and still maintain the same thickness and diameter as silver. Silver has a specific magnetism and this reaction to a rare earth magnet can be an effective test in determining if the silver piece is authentic. If you want to take your testing to the next level, you can invest in products like a density tester. All of these techniques are fine for coins, rounds, and bars. But what about silverware, candlesticks, serving trays, ornaments, statues, and jewelry? These items can also contain silver but may not be marked with their purity or may be mismarked in an attempt to deceive the buyer. Here is where the touchstone technique of verifying the purity of silver comes into play. This is considered a destructive technique, so caution should be taken to ensure that you have exhausted all other testing techniques. So what exactly is the touchstone method? It involves the use of a dark colored stone such as slate or lightite. The touchstone is thoroughly clean and free of any previous samples or leftover testing solutions. The way this is accomplished is to place it face down on a piece of 320 grit sandpaper on a flat surface and sand off any sample material then neutralize it in a bath of water and baking soda, rinsing it off and making sure that it is dry before its next use. You will also need a specific solution of nitric and usually muriatic acid. This solution is designated to react specifically with silver and will produce a color that can then be used to determine the purity of the item. 
If the reaction produces a bright red, then it is 39 silver. A dark red means 0.925. A brown color indicates usually a purity of 0 0.800, and if the reaction turns green, it is usually a purity of 50% or 0 0.500. And this color change is accomplished through the formation of silver chromate. If the reaction turns clear, then what you probably have is not silver at all, or it may have a purity less than 50%. Here's how the test works. Make sure the item being tested is first thoroughly cleaned using methyl ethyl ketone or acetone to assure removal of any lacquer coating. You may have to file off any electroplate or other types of hard coatings. You rub the suspected silver item gently back and forth on the testing stone to leave a thin but clearly visible metal sample. You want to be careful to select a location on your piece that won't be visible and you don't want to use the clasps, tags, or anywhere near any soldering joints. Make sure your sample is enough to get a good chemical reaction. The right amount of sample needed will be obvious to you once you do a few tests. Once the rub samples are on the slate, you take the test solution bottles and apply a drop to the rubs. Allow 10 to 20 seconds for the reaction to take place, then blot or wipe the test with a white paper towel or tissue and observe the color left behind. If the item has at least 50% silver content, there will be a color residue left on the wipe. So here are some examples of me conducting a touchstone test on silver. First, you must realize that this type of testing involves the use of nitric and usually muriatic acid and precautions should be taken to protect any exposed skin and your eyes. Always follow the manufacturer's direction for proper care, storage, and handling of acids. Having a solution of baking soda and water nearby as a neutralizer may also be a good idea. First, let's test some known pieces. Let's begin with this sunshine round right out of a tube. I'll create a sample rub on this 2x2 slate that came with my touchstone acid testing kit. Now I'll use this bottle of nitric and muriatic acid solution to see my results. I do place the date of purchase on each bottle so that I can be aware of the age of the solution as acids will degrade due to thermal or light decomposition and might affect the accuracy of their readings. This is why it's important to keep your test kits in a temperature controlled environment and stored in a container that protects it from light. All you need is a single drop of acid solution onto the sample rub to render the test. Then take a clean paper towel or tissue and blot the acid solution. Then observe to see if there's any color change, optimally looking for red. And there we have it, a bright red, meaning this is 3.9 silver. Now I'm going to test this poured silver ST66 channel round prototype. I didn't end up using this design, but let's see how its purity tests out. A nice bright red. Okay, so let's test this silverware handle I picked up. Make a rub sample.
and we have silver. Here is a ring that has a hallmark, but it's difficult to read. Let's test it and see what we have. It is faint, but the red is still there, meaning this is a silver ring. Now let's move on to this Italian necklace. It is clearly hallmarked Italy 925. Even the clasp itself is made from silver and has a hallmark. I'll take the rub sample near the end. I'm only seeing the faintest amount of red I realized that I had recently cleaned this necklace in a silver cleaning solution and hadn't rinsed it off yet. So here's a prime example of how you can get a false reading by not properly cleaning your pieces prior to testing with MEK or acetone. Here's a wedding certificate too. Sure does look and sound like silver, but I have my doubts. If this turns out to be silver, I'll be melting it down, so I will demonstrate a more destructive technique to acid testing. In order to penetrate through any plating, you must first file through this layer to ensure you are testing the metal that makes up the base of the piece. Once the cut is deep enough, apply the acid testing solution directly on the freshly cut portion and observe the reaction. In this case, the solution turned black, meaning this is not silver. I'm curious to see how the surface reacts to the testing solution. Putting a drop on the surface, and we have a turquoise reaction, meaning this piece is coated in nickel. Too bad it's not solid nickel. Here's an American Silver Eagle. It's hard to see, but the red is there. Here's a 40% Kennedy half. red here as well. Here's a 90% Franklin.
a nice red tint. In conclusion, when it comes to testing bullion coins, rounds, and bars for purity, I probably wouldn't use the touchstone test as it provides results that are not necessarily conclusive as to the specific purity level. I would, however, be comfortable using it to determine if a piece is even silver at all. How do you test silver pieces other than coins, rounds, and bars to determine their authenticity? Let me know in the comment section below. A big thank you to all who support this channel, especially to those who take the time to watch the entire video, comment, like, share, and subscribe. If you are not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Then be sure to select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. Be sure to check out the ST66 Discord server and the weekly live bullion auction. I'll look forward to seeing you there.